this is Stacy from Truly Majestic. Today we're going to be making these nice, soft, squishy, wet felted stones. And we're going to be doing that using the washing machine in a super easy, super fast method. So I have a whole bunch of scraps of wool roving here. If you don't have wool roving scraps, you can certainly buy wool roving for this project. You'll also need foam cut up into chunks, any chunk you want your rock size. And this foam is actually from an old cushion that I had and I was going to chuck it out but I decided to keep it and cut it up into a bunch of different chunks and wrap it in wool roving to make the stones for this tutorial. So we want to stretch out, sorry I can't speak today, stretch out our wool roving as thin as possible and just simply wrap it around these foam pieces. Now. It is better to have lots of layers of thinly stretched out wool roving than one or two thick layers to cover your foam because if you have thick layers it usually shows the edges and so it'll look really tacky and a little bit stupid. And that's definitely what we don't want. So. I'm going to take all of these pieces of foam and just gently wrap these, um, my different colors of wool roving that I have around them. And they will not stay in this shape. I've cut them into squares and rectangles, but by the time they're finished felting, because wool, the wool is going to shrink up and felt up, it pulls all those edges in and they will be oval stones and square, sort of rounded square stones you won't have any sharp edges showing. So don't worry about smoothing them out now. They do that when they get felted up. And I'm just trying to smooth out the thicker, lumpy bits. So you can see me, I've left this full length. I haven't sped this video up intentionally. So you guys can see kind of how fiddly this is sometimes. So don't try to go through it like mad the first time if you haven't done it. You can see I am taking my time to try to get it um, you know the way I want it and just for effect I'm going to pull a little piece of white off just to put like a white streak down the stone and I think that makes them look like more kind of natural and fun looking When your stone is the way you want it, we are going to put it in a stocking or pantyhose or whatever you call them. So I never throw my stockings away. When they get holes in them and when they get all worn out and used, I always keep them for felting. So you can see this one has a run in it, but that's not a problem. We're going to just twirl it around once and then I'm going to put it back through again because there's a hole on that part. So it'll be having like two layers of stockings stocking going around it. And then at the very end of this one, I'm just going to tie a slip knot. You don't want to tie a normal knot or you'll never be able to get it out after you've put it through the washing machine, but slip knots work great. Now I'm going to do up all of these blocks the same way, different colors with streaks when I'm finished into the pantyhose into a little wad like this. And you can, by the way, you can squish this up and make it nice and squished up tight and put it, put it in. That just helps it felt. So now I have all these ones done and I'm going to do blue the last. So just so you can see how I've done it again, I'm going to be doing the same thing as I did with my red, apart from this one doesn't have any streaks. So this is a nice blue blend that I had a little piece of and I've stretched it out already to pretty thin and I'm just going to try to wrap it around different ways. And as you can see, the foam is getting really squished as I go around it. And that's just fine. That's actually good. It helps the stone look more natural. You don't want the wool roving to be loose on your foam. If it's very loose, it'll kind of fall apart and look horrible and it won't work. 
so it does need to be quite snug around your foam piece. And again, I'm not going to fast forward, I'm going to let you guys see real time how I'm doing this. For this wool, the end was a bit felted and I don't want it to be felted yet because it won't stick together well, so I pulled that little piece off so I have like brand new soft fluffy ends. That way they will felt onto my stone and kind of bind everything together nicely. So I'm going to squish my stone up, pop it in a stocking, and the same as I did with my other ones, tie a slip knot on the end, and then I'll show you what we do with the washing machine. It's always best to have your finished um, stones, well they're not completely finished yet, in a cotton bag or a um, lingerie bag or something like that so they don't stick to your other clothes because sometimes the fuzz felts out through the stockings and gets on other things. So we're just washing it with a normal wash, normal amount of soap with another load of laundry and da -da -da, here's what they look like when they're finished. So the washing machine does all of the hard work. That is actually literally all you need to do. Now always take these out of your um, stockings when they're wet. If you do this when they're dry, when they've completely dried, it is a nightmare and you'll have tons and tons of little tiny microscopic wool dust going up into the air and into your nose and into your lungs and you don't want that. So when you're pulling them out of stockings you really have to rip some of them out because they're felted onto the stocking if you have very thin sheer stockings. See how easy the red came out? That was because I had doubled that one up so it came out much easier. Um, let's see, any other good tips? Yeah, just rub them around in your hand once you get them out because you'll have a whole little halo of fuzz around them and rolling it around in your hands for like two seconds just kind of helps smooth all of that fuzz down. So after you have all of your stones felted that you want, you might have several loads of laundry to do to get them all here, you need to pour them out on the ground after they've dried and arrange them how you would like them to be. Now you want your stones to be facing down, so whatever the top of your rug is, is going to be facing down onto the table or floor. And next you need to grab a needle and thread and sew all of your stones together. You want to make sure they are very tightly sewn together. And it makes it even more easy if you take a piece of fabric or a um, the the bot sorry the back of what are those things called you know when you make a rug it's the bottom part of the rug it's like a very thick canvas with lots of holes if you put that over the back of the stones and sew it onto that it makes it much 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 easier and faster so that's what I'm doing sewing everything together and you'll see what it looks like in a little bit. Here's the final product. You guys can make yours bigger, smaller, however you like. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, please share it with your friends. And if you make your own rug, I would love to see what it looks like. Check the description. I have a Facebook post there and you can upload your own pictures to that Facebook post. I'll see you later. Have an awesome, happy making day.